turning points after the fights. Yeah, usually, uh, now we say, so uh, do you think they're going to ban the Earthshaker? And, oh, oh, we, we don't even know if Earthshaker's going to be in there. It's Captain's Draft. <laughs> That's true. You can't really get that big plan. So that kind of stuff about talking about, like, Roshan, yeah, I think it's more about talking about objectives and play style. When you're looking at these, could be like, okay, do we need to focus maybe more on Rosh this game? Should we have a better option there? No Earthshaker. But they, they banned it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the meta ban, right? But Ice Frog got in there. A couple other scary faces. Huskar is one we've talked about quite a bit. Uh, that can be pretty scary in Captain's Draft uh, when he doesn't have the proper counters. There's a, a troll sniper. Oh, you go back to the old meta if you really the wanted need, to do something like that. The niche peaks I'm looking at here are Terra Blade, Phoenix. These kind of heroes, maybe illusion-based heroes, even Timbersaw. You know, the, the heroes that need very specific counters. Depending on the bands here, a little bit light on good roaming fours. There's an Earth Spirit, uh, there's a Night Stalker, Clockwork, a clockwork is probably the best. But uh, a lot of bands here, so this could be an interesting support game. A lot of good fives, though, with the Warlock Dazzle down there. You know, that uh, he's been trying all day. That uh, Techies, he's there again. He's just, <laughs> just look at him, there. look at that little face. <laughs> uh, peeking up out of the corner of that box, like, hello. I see you're down one game, EG. Would you like to try something new? <laughs> Would you like to be down two? <laughs> Well, Queen of Pain, very popular so far uh, in the tournament. We talked a lot about uh, Night Stalker actually, I believe, made it through the whole time. So he's there this time. Uh, we are going to lose that clockwork, as predicted. And I assume Earth Spirit will probably suffer Disapp the same fate. Disappear as well. He's kind of a hero that does it all. They're the, yeah. the danger heroes in Captain's Draft, right? Yeah. First pick will go the way of EG, so they'll get to pick their poison once this manning stage is done. There's an Earth Spirit out there that does so much. There's a Huskar in terms of in the way of like cheesy heroes. That cheesy heroes. Oh. Especially for Secret. There's a Huskar Dazzle as well. That's oh, boy. And there is an option. Uh, the EG Puck, too. As far as counters go, there's actually quite a lot of counters for Huskar in the pool, though, right? Timber, and Bristleback, even like PL. There's, there's quite a few, so mm -hmm. maybe he's not. We did see Magnus banned out in the last game first by Secret. I like Ogre in this, dra in this mode a lot. It enables you to buff up heroes that might necessarily not be so good in the early game. Kind of increases their potential quite a lot. Yeah, just in general, very strong hero. Can be five as and a four two. Yeah, Magnus and Ogre, the right. two ones. Right. And who, who would you buff up this game? I mean, normally like PA is the one that comes on. I guess Troll. Uh, sniper is actually sniper. really good. Sniper, yeah. Ogre. Yeah. Terra Blade's fine too. Yep. Nice bump. Okay. Okay. A lot of good heroes in this pool. Let's go Magnus first pick for EG. There's still there's still a puck that's been a yeah, for that. a lot of these teams just uh, just to give you the lanes. Warlock. Warlock first. So okay. good sustainability. Uh, of course, great team fight. I guess the, me, uh, the lack of five positions is the problem, right? Look, yeah. look at the rest of the pool. Who else? It's Dazzle or Warlock, essentially. Yeah, and Dazzle was banned off by EG. Them, so. yeah. Maybe uh, Leshrac could be another decent one. We've seen it before. It's not too we, bad. You can run Phoenix situation. as a five as well, right? Maybe not ideal, but it's messy. Uh, when I look at Warlock, I tend to think about good dual offlanes, uh, ways that Warlock might be able to enable certain heroes. Of course, Warlock Legion was like huge for a long time. This is actually the position I love in Captain's Draft, right? You have... You have to make up this kind of wanky li lineup, janky, sorry. Like you Phoenix here, you Verit Spirit. You have to kind of <laughs> mix and match. I'm Irish. We, we're not great at the old English. It's not our first language. I'm Irish. We <laughs> use wanky all the time back in the homeland. <laughs> we kind it's of a do. normal adjective there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Earth Spirit didn't get banned out, so Secret will have their chance at it here. That's a great Yapsor hero. A great first pick for Secret, no doubt. And the with the puck. Nice to take that away from EG, I think. Oh, probably likely you're off. Probably one of Smale's, I guess, better heroes, one yeah. would think, uh, if he just gets a throw in the off lane, right? Quick can feel comfortable. play it as a four as well. Yeah, that too. Four puck. That's interesting. A classic. A crit yeah. classic. Hmm. Look at them. The brooding over this crit. All the pressure on him. Everyone says Smale's talking. He's thinking about it right he now. He's listening he to me. Oh, Bulba's in there. Jeez. They, they need some more people around that computer, I think. Where's Phil? Well, I like it when teams huddle, though. You know, so it, it has a more... I, I, I always think back to Zenith, and I think back to Loda at the end of the boot, and the rest of the team was huddled up, <laughs> and Loda's just in the corner, and he looks so sad. <laughs> just taking a nap. That's the SSA strategy, yeah. you know, the full out lounging. Uh, but he makes his appearance, the Night Stalker. Could be core, could be position four. Uh, when I, again, with the Warlock, that's actually a very good situation. Mm -hmm. If you have the core Night Stalker, you can be extremely aggressive. Just getting the front lines yeah. set up for a nice ulti. Yeah. Good vision as well. Another uh, vision hero from EG, and again, with, with uh, trait commonly with Misery, and his team says he loves to play these kind of heroes. With Night Stalker, he's often top net worth at times. Gets to the helm and uh, really shoves out lanes, provides constant vision and lane pressure. He's really good at doing that, and again, it's usually more experienced teams that can really take advantage of that, and 
Misery's definitely uh, playing with, with that group right now. Does, uh, does Secret let them have Jug with Mag and pick the Terrorblade themselves? Is that is that this run? Uh, well, they now have a Lesh rack. They picked up Lesh. I would think the Jug would fit pretty well with them. With the push right? You could just, yeah, you can just kind of five man. You have the healing ward. Uh, you can be very aggressive with the puck. It gives them an early game option, but they're not really locked into anything. Mm -hmm. also, they also go too, for actually. a uh, bristle back. And again, they can potentially hit an earlier timing with this as well. You have Lesh who helps take down objectives. Um, the bristle back, nothing right now really deals that great with him. And uh, often, like, you can hit this early mid game timing where it's really hard to fight the bristle back. It's difficult yeah. though, right? Lesh rack. His stone's not very easy to hit. Earth Spirit, same problem. They're, they're kind of lacking that kind of go stone. You know what I mean? Well, one thing about uh, Bristleback, when he was popular, is that one of the best things about him was that he made it very, uh, made it very difficult for heroes like Faceless Void and Magnus, just because you don't want to RP a Bristleback. That's true. That feels terrible. Yeah. It's like the worst thing ever. Unless you get like a really good skewer after or something like that. So, um, Kind of the same thing applies to Timber, too, who also looks pretty good in that 1v1 versus the Magnus or the Night Stalker here. You That's very tempting. Ichi could be considering a troll. Like, I, I yep. think of troll Magnus as a really uh, scary it's very combo. Strong, yes. Yeah. Usually because the Magnus is an offlane player, right. and you have two cores that take advantage of the troll. Right? The troll and plus one. Yeah, and I think it, it gives them some security if uh, Juggernaut gets picked up here by Secret, because troll can scale pretty well against the Jug with that late game bash. I would I be so sad if I this was. I bet Bulba's suggesting that right now, that LGD fan over there. He loves <laughs> that uh, Magnus <laughs> troll. Yeah, I really timber. like the Timber here. It's very good. Because it, it, it takes away options for Magnus. Um, he does not want to be in a 1v1 versus Timber Saw. And there's not, And then you're like a Night Stalker support. You can't harass a Timber. Yep. You're just going to be giving him reactive armor. And it deters any sort of Huskar play in case that was on the docket. And the last two picks, do they go for the... I think that puts down the Jug for me. I don't really want to play Jug. Like, I would rather be Troll, I would think. Into Timber? In comparison to a jug, <laughs> at least maybe you have a chance for some bash plays, but it's pretty brutal. I'd rather be Luna. I think in that scenario, have at least some magic damage to try to deal with the timber. So basically, if EG go for a jug, then Team Secret pick up like a Terra Blade or an Illusion based hero. I think I think Terra Blade is the best. Um, Troll is definitely the best standing pick for me for EG. There's also another mid here that we saw quite a bit recently that uh, might make its way in this game, which is the Death Prophet. Yeah. So very hard to roam into. Just a pretty consistent hero. Let's just take objectives wow. okay. as well. Jug. They yeah. take the jug. It's a classic. The yeah. mag jug. The Feels good. Really has a lot of value against uh, both finals as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah. and we just talked about how True. last game, BKB piercing, none there right now, right? For the uh, side of secret, so some there's freedom. The and profit. yeah, there's the DP. Look at that. The Four only silence. int hero who went untouched. Eight out of nine gone, and who remains? <laughs> Look at oh. me, so oh, sad. Techies. <laughs> so, so sad. Sad little piggy down there. So final pick for Secret. What will it be, boys? They need some sort of a core. I still think Terrible, it's okay. I'm pretty with you on that, Shane. Depends on what style they want to play for. Like illusion-based heroes in general. Their roaching is quite awful. I feel like Metamorphosis also matches up okay against Death Prophet. You have these two really long ultimates. She pops her strength. You can have a way to deal with it with extra damage and range. Illusions also absorb the DP damage. Yeah, that's true. So is that PL or Terrorblade, kind of our top two here, I guess, when it comes to illusions? Yes. Sven, could be another way to deal with him. Yeah, you kind of forgot about him up at the yeah, uh, very top, top of the list. The so Warcry is decent yeah, it's a, this game. I don't know, you see the problems with Sven, though. He can be, I mean, he really is like this big one-shot hero, right? You have to execute very well in every single team fight. Uh, and you already have someone like a Timbersaw who doesn't have that problem at all, right? He just has all these spells that he just keeps throwing out. You have the Siphon, it's Kaiju, the Silence from Night Stalker, Warlock, slow. Like currently you're playing against two big cooldowns on Exorcism and the RP, and right now you don't have that issue on Secret, so I don't think I'd want to like throw myself into that same camp. I'd like to avoid that if possible. Another choice for them is be, be a bit harder to execute would be something like uh, Clinks. Um, you can yep. Clinks would be good. There he is. Hey! Uh, there he is. It is a bit tougher. It's more of a uh, EG classic as well, mm -hmm. but... I definitely like that better. No cooldowns really to worry about, other than the fact you're just death packing. But of course, that's been improved quite a bit uh, over the past while. Yeah. Like overall, the riskier looking draft, though, in yeah. my eyes. I uh, I went with Secret to win the series, but I really favor EG's draft this game. I think it's just very easy to execute. They can group up, they can push. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty simple. On the other hand, you have Timbersaw, who has the front line, and the rest of the team are really weak, like so super that's squishy. One for EG, Jack. I'm going to have to go with EG in this game as well. Um, Puppy's never been afraid to put the pressure to execute on his teammates, and uh, you know, I expect him to play well, but I, th I like EG's draft. Trent, I like that. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the old Timbersaw here. I'm hoping that it's Ace who plays it. It's kind of an old classic for him, but I don't know if that's how it's actually going to work out. 
So uh, I like Secret. I think it's good against the Magnus. That's going to be the big uh, question mark once again is Sumail. So. And I'm going to go in the Secret camp as well. I'm actually going to share all that analysis, Trent. Ditto for me. But with Great. that said, let's hand it over to our casters and see what they've got going on in the Situation Room. All right. Thanks, guys. We're here with game number two. And the question that I have to ask, Brax, mm -hmm. you think we're going to see game three here? I do. I oh. think that uh, EG's lineup looks very good. Their cosmetic game is on point as well. Look at that juggernaut. Yeah, that jug is decked out for RTs. You guys can't see it, but you will. Trust me. He is loaded. And uh, the bigger storyline for me, I think, is Sumail has played pretty well. Mm -hmm. And he is now on one of his favorite heroes, at least used to be his favorite heroes in the mid lane, the Magnus. What do you think about that pickup for him? Yeah, it looks really good this game for sure. I think uh, in Captain's Draft, heroes like Magnus probably shines a bit more. Makes a lot of these other melee heroes a bit more viable. Yep bit stronger. And they Looks do good. have the jug to go along with it. So we will jump into the game. This is, of course, game number two. We're getting underway here. And uh, we'll see how the lane's set up. Obviously, you have the clinks, which is very interesting. Tell me about the clinks for Secret. And uh, I think it was last overall pick for them. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it for mid one here? I think it was probably one of the best carries they could have picked that was left in the pool. It's a carry that you can approach the fight from any angle. Right. right. Then you also have Puck, who kind of causes chaos in the fight. Gets uh, vision with the orb, locks some of these heroes down with coil. It's just a, it lets you take the fight without having to clump up. So you can avoid a lot of the uh, Magnus problems you might run into with a different style of carry. That's a very good point also because you have so much mobility with these heroes as well. I Maybe mean, yep. the Shrek, obviously not, but like a Timber Saw, a Puck, even the Clinks, even to a certain extent, the Earth Spirit, you're all over the place. You're taking fights, like you said, from different angles. So None of these heroes need to walk next to each other to get into a fight. Right. It's very important yeah. when it comes to like uh, just general spacing. So spread themselves out, yep. get some vision down as well to make things a bit easier. But uh, we'll see how it turns out. Ace is going to be on the Timber Saw, and we'll see where they send these heroes for both teams. EG will drop a ward aggressively into the enemy jungle to start things out, not really blocking the, the, the easy camp, but trying to get them some vision towards the hard camp. On the other side, RTZ sitting close to a ward that was placed by Secret, and that will block the easy camp here, as you can see. And uh, RTZ is going to be on the jug. He actually has a ward of his own to drop down uh, in his backpack, so something to consider. But for now, EG, Sumail getting aggressive here. They've spotted Ace. He'll give him a couple of auto attacks here. They see if he goes for some play trying to get this good split Earth. And that's going to give Ace the bounty rune. Now Sumail's on the run, taking a few auto attacks coming in from Puppy, but should be just fine. He has plenty of regen to work with, it looks like, and shouldn't be an issue. Yep, should be just fine. I like the lane setup from Team Secret having the safe lane Timber Sock. It frees up the supports to do pretty much whatever they want once Timber gets some levels. Yeah. But at the same time, they can't really prevent this pull even with two heroes just right there. This is just something we've seen so commonly. They get off the split Earth, which is pretty nice, but Crit should still be able to pull this back. But this is the, this is the new offlane way. Get the wave as best as you can back to your lane. But Crit might be to This is the order. rolling boulder. He actually dodged it swiftly. Still taking a lot of damage. Good split Earth dodge from Crit. He's going to go for the TP. Oh, it's going to be close. Taking a lot of damage here. He will make it back to the base. Crit is able to make it out of harm's way. That pull, though, Look it is going to be stopped. Yeah, Misery. Fanta. The Shadow Ward is doing a lot of damage. Misery is laying into him. He's got the Illusion Orb. He's going to hold on to it for now. And a Tango and Sal. Now Misery's the one that's in trouble. They rotated Yapsor up here. The Illusion Orb will hit. They have a Rolling Boulder, I believe, for Yapsor already. And Puppy has the Split Earth, which he is going to pop. And Yapsor will secure first blood onto Misery. So, yes, Crit makes it out. But great rotations from Puppy and Yapsor to secure that kill with a Diving Misery. Yep, heavy commitment. But luckily in the safe lane, they have Timber Saw against Magnus. Timber's totally fine. That. Yeah. So at this point, we'll see how the mid lane shapes up. A little bit different from what we saw last game. It was pretty much from minute one, there was a Lich to help out Arteezy. Now finally, Crit is coming back in, and Puppy has rotated as well, just to get some help for uh, these two mid laners. Yeah, Heinstalker doesn't do a whole lot to Clinks, though. So he's going to be totally fine. It's almost like the dual lane doesn't really feel like it does much for EG side. It's just a place for Heinstalker to get some experience. Yeah. Fata should still have a tough time. He got some help earlier, but he's going to get zoned out by Arteezy and Misery. They can continue to spam the Shadow Word. He only has two Tangos left. He's going to try to build into a bottle, but you can already see the harass is severe. But on the other side of the map, it's good because they have the Timber Saw free farming. He's got 11 last hits right now to the five of Sumail at this point. Yep, and this is one of those matchups that just gets impossible once Timber gets some levels. Oh, crit snags it. Nicely done. Avoids the Split Earth yet again. And now we'll get back and get his own Bounty Rune as well. Or he's going to look for the rune first and then decide back to back to the high ground. You know, we didn't talk a whole lot about the support Lesh. It's not the uh, most reliable support hero just because stun's pretty difficult to land. It's very small, takes a lot of time, but it's one of these heroes that um, it kind of, it's really nice when you have a safe laner that's self-sufficient, that you don't need to help too right. much. So you can just 
stack and pull, get your own experience, and then play the game from there. I mean, it's so common to see a Lush in the core role. What do you think he does in terms of uh, ability-wise? Is it still Edict Max? What, what would you see here for the Lush Rack for Puppy? I imagine it would be the Edict Max. They have a ton of building damage in the... Uh, you know, the Edict, the Searing Arrows, some Bone Clanks as well. So. Mid lane, great push back from the Absor onto Crit. Plenty of Searing Arrows to come through, but the Spirit Siphon will push them back in mid one. It's nice not to go up to the high ground to try to kill Crit, so just some harass coming in from both teams. Puppy on the backside looking for Crit, maybe with the Split Earth, just trying to get aggressive, but Crit looks to be fine at this point. And Fata still chased down Arteezy, heading away from the creep with just to harass Fata. He's in the jungle just trying to leech experience for now. He does have six last hits, so he is getting something out of this, but he is diving. He's going to lose your jaunt away. He's just trying to avoid Warlock as much as possible. He's gonna he face shifts away. the tower, and he's just going to try to pull the wave back to his tower, get something going there, and try to find at least a little bit of experience going his way. Shenanigans. That's what that is, Mark. Yeah. He went deep for that. But uh, still... 18 last hits for mid one in the mid lane, much better this time around than, of course, last game on the Invoker where he had about 6 to like 20 from the RTZ Sven. Yeah, much better matchup for sure. No Lich, no uh, half a hero before level 25. Right. So, Sumail obviously also doing pretty well, 15 last hits, and trying to get a Blink Dagger early, I would imagine. I mean, what, Arcane's Blink? Soul Ring. Yeah, oh yeah, Soul Ring, that's right. The new standby for a lot of these off laners. So what do you think is going to like uh, change this game? You know, what breaks it open from the lane phase? It's usually like Puck level 6, yeah. but he's in the off lane, so sometimes that's not as reliable. You have Earth Spirit roaming around. I guess they actually have a lot of kill potential mid lane. Like when Earth Spirit hits like 2 or 3, I roll into the, uh, what is it, the strafe from Clanks, a ton of damage. Yeah. It's tough to bring down the Death Prophet with the Spirit Siphon. They're trying, Rolling Boulder will miss, Fear will be able to get out just fine. Uh, he had Spirit Siphon available, plus a Manga to work with too, so... He's okay. A lot of action around this mid lane. The, the important thing to me is what you were talking about, the level 6 for the Puck, getting that Dream Quill, trying to find a gank with it. But like you said, he's in the off lane. We just saw him pull a wave, so he'll get some experience, but it looks like it might be a ways away from having that Dream Quill early on into the game. You know, you would think so, but he's actually doing very well. So I think he'll have his 6 at a pretty decent timing this game. Again, it feels like uh, Secret have the better roamers, or at least the better lanes to roam into. Right, like the um, how is Night Stalker and Death Prophet really going to kill this Clinks? It's not the same as Earth Spirit rolling in with the tons of physical damage from Clinks. And they have this Timber Saw who's going to be harassing Magnus over and over while Timber sits at full HP. It's just uh, they have more openings and more plays they can make. And we talked about the supports in between games too. We talked about the scaling of the supports. I feel like with Earth Spirit and Lashrak, how do you feel about those heroes scaling later into the game for, for Team Secret? So in team fights, they definitely do not match up to Warlock at all. Right. Right, and the Night Stalker, while he's not the strongest team fight hero, he provides vision and you know gets annoying. It's definitely EG favored in terms of uh, supports in the late game. So. And with Captain Shrek, when you have such a, a shallow, shallow hero pool, mm -hmm. sometimes that's what it comes down to, those support picks. Yeah, for sure. They're, uh, they can offset a lot of the uh, draft differences, for sure. But in this game right now, I mean, Secret are doing well in CS-wise. Timbersaw free farming, mid one, about the same, 31 last hit, 7 eyes. Ace is getting aggressive. He's level 6. He's got the Chakram. He's got a Soul Ring ready as well. So Sumail needs to be a little careful. Sumail is not uh, too far away from his 6 as well. Something to consider if they want to make something happen with an RP. But killing Ace is going to be tough. He has level 3 reactive armor at this point. Yeah, once he gets to this point, he doesn't really take damage. You can just sit under the tower, push the wave in forever. Right. And eventually you chip away at that. Boulder Smash will hit. Edict Splitter. Sumail avoids it. They're going to Timber Chain and look for a Chakram. They can't find it. Crit's only level 2, so he can die pretty quickly. But. Split Earth, again, we talked about it, it's not the easiest stun to land, even with a Boulder Smash setup. Yeah, the Boulder Slash uh, stun is not very long at all. Mid one getting caught, Dust is up, Crit level two, Spirit Siphon coming out, there's the Crypt Swarm, Puppy coming in as well, looking for a Split Earth, mid one getting dove, they might get this kill, one more auto attack, should do it from Crit, and he gets it, he's now in the tree line, Hunter in the night, up to the high ground, will he survive the rolling Boulder, Yapsor on the chase, good Boulder Smash, yet one more auto attack, will get the kill. Crit almost made a magnific magnificent escape, but of course couldn't quite get out of trouble there, the Hunter in the night. Yep, still very nicely done, they get the kill on Clinks, totally worth it. So that is a big dive. Fear getting back into it. 30 last hits for him. And uh, quietly, Puck has gotten back up to 24 last hits himself in the top lane. He's doing pretty well. Yeah, doing extremely well. Drug can't really kill Puck at all, but at the same time, Puck doesn't kill Juggernaut. So both these heroes will just sit in front of each other and keep farming, probably until Puck wants to make rotation. Yeah, I mean, he's almost level 6, and you would assume at that point, if he starts moving around around, try and find something. Yeah, definitely. Since he can't kill the hero in front of him, he'll probably look to gank mid or to TP and counter gank mid lane, but 
This is where Timber Saw gets uh, a little ridiculous. Takes no damage at all from the tower. Can sit and tank it forever. I mean, he is giving Sumail the business right now. He's throwing out Chakrams. He's sitting on level one Whirling Death, level one Timber Chain, but he's going to get some more levels, and the Chakram continues to do some serious damage. Shadow Ward will keep Sumail up and fighting fit for now. But Ace can just dive behind the tower. He's already put a lot of pressure on the tier one. It's getting super low, and Secret are abusing this bottom lane, this bottom lane Timber Saw coming out. Yep, it's just the tower. You just can't defend at this point. And then you have the Lush Edict as well. That just knock down the tower while Timbersaw tanks it up. It's pretty strong and difficult for EG to deal with. I guess they need a whole bunch of levels on Death Prophet before they can try to fight that. Long duration silences are fantastic against this when you can just stack up the magic damage. And I like seeing this from mid one. On the other side of the map, it looks like there's a battle for a bounty rune, which Crit is able to snag or deny from Fata. And then we'll take a fight down bottom. Looks like they're going to grab the kill onto Smell, getting caught and killed on him. I like the rotation from mid one. Bringing the Clinks at level six. As soon as he gets the death pact, he has Medallion to work with as well. More than enough damage with all of these heroes bottom, and they've already taken the tier one in this lane. Yep, they're playing to the Timber Saw's strengths. He's unkillable. Once you bring people to him, he can kill anyone in front of him. It's easy to gank because uh, since he's always up in the enemy's face, you always have vision of some guy sitting in front of you, and then you can just do this where you zone these heroes off behind the tower, hit it with Lash Rack, Clinks. I mean, Pretty so much what, unstoppable. What can you do? They can bring the Death Prophet like you talked about, I suppose, but is there anything else they can do to stop Ace at this point? I mean, they can bring the Death Prophet, but they still might not kill him. Yeah. So it's a big problem at this point of the game. I mean, Sumail still level 6. And on the other side, Fear's just trying to get anything he can with the Exorcism onto this Tier 1 tower. He gets it, and it's pretty good, but mid-1, they'll take the Tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. A full lane of towers gone in terms of the Tier 1 and Tier 2 here for Secret picked up. Okay, the trades are good, but Exorcism has been used. That's what, two and a half minutes where Timbersaw doesn't have to worry about it, that proper rotation. Yep. He'll probably just TP back up top and then keep on rolling. Yeah. That's exactly what they're going to do as they send Ace up to the top lane. They're going to have Fata there to help him out as well if need be. And EG kind of just have to back up. It is daytime, especially with Crit only being level 3. They won't be able to get a lot done uh, during this daytime. I mean, just look at the game plan from EG. Timbersaw, TV, lane. I'm out. Yeah. I want nothing to do with this guy at all. And they're just going to keep losing towers like that. Arteezy is going to need a lot more farm in order to be able to deal with uh, this Timbersaw later on into the game. And just in general... Crit is going to get caught, silence up, rolling boulder, the boulder smash along with it, searing arrows and strafe, one more will do the job and mid one will secure it. Nice, quick, clean kill. That's the thing, right? Timbersaw can push up like that so safely where your other heroes don't have to sit behind him, and you can still pressure the other sides of the map. So despite taking two towers, it is still only a 1k advantage for Secret. It feels like more at this point though, Brax. It does, right? It feels really bad because they can't fight the Timbersaw yet, but EG, they're still farming very, very well. And they'll eventually hit the point of the game where uh, Timbersaw is not that tanky, and they'll be able to kill him. Or at least, you know, kill his teammates without dying. That's at least a few minutes away, and then there's the other heroes you have to worry about, like Fata on the puck. 1200, he's getting closer and closer to that blink dagger, and then you have some more initiation to work with. And they've taken another tier 1 tower in the top lane. In the meantime, EG grouping up mid, trying to find something here. There is a DD rune at the bottom rune spot. Mid one, though, he's slippery. He's got the skeleton walk to work with. Mod is so uneventful, we didn't even need to watch it. We know what's going to happen. Yeah. Tower's dead. Timbersaw's here. Yeah. No heroes around. It's just how it happens. Yeah, I mean, he, and he's just going to keep going. He's a full hood of defiance at this point already. Plus Arcane and Soul Ring. Very tanky. Yep. Level 4 reactive armor. It is just about impossible to kill him right now, I feel like. They just can't handle him at this point of the game, but it'll get easier later on. They're going to pop the Edict. Ace does not seem too concerned. Good usage of the Glyph. And now Sumail looking to try to fight. Maybe looking for a skewer, see if they can slow him nice down. Stalker's coming in. And they're going to just timber chain him away. And oh, now they, but wait, it's day. Yeah, they, they just can't do anything during this daytime. I think they have, like, what, maybe a minute left on daytime, which yep. is the good news for EG, so maybe they make something happen during this night, but... Still. Yeah. Does not seem like they can kill this guy. And it's just been space for Fodder to keep farming towards his blink dagger. He's super, super close. I mean, look at this map control. Fodder's farming bottom. They're pushing up top. There's nothing they can do to stop them, even when they run at him. The one issue is that Secret doesn't have the tier one man. I should look at that too. Misery's probably dead here, even with the Shadow Word. I don't think the yeah, Asian. See ya. Timber Chain, even get the Chakram onto Fear to push him back as well. And this will lead into more tower damage. Plus, they just used the Glyph. So yep. that tower is probably going to be in some trouble as well. It'll take a lot of damage. And I can't imagine EG will want to defend. They'll probably slow it down with some shockwaves, but that's about it. You know, Warlock still needs to hit his level six. Uh, they do have RP, but they need to bring the jug up here. They're going to pop the exorcism. Ace is in deep. They're working on the tower. He's got a timber chain away. The spirit siphon going as well. He's taking a lot of damage. There's a skewer the RP. They need more, though. He's very tanky. The shockwave silenced up. He can't timber chain away. Oh Getting low, but still able to make it out. No. The spirit siphon, not enough damage. And Ace should survive. He regions up with the reactive armor. It's Sumail still chasing, looking for puppy, looking for anything. That is exorcism as well. Down, and now mid one might get caught here. If they can get this kill, it would be huge. But the 
Cochran coming through, slowing them down. They'll pop the Edict. Fear is in too deep. Dying. The Ghosts have to come back. He'll get one kill, but Ace is still in there, still tanking it up in Cripple Fall as well. Two dead. Ace gets a killing spree, and it is just all going beautifully, except for losing mid one in that fight for Secret. Oh my god. They committed so much to try to kill Timbersaw. It was not able to happen, and then ends up dying for it. Again, that's the big exorcism cooldown used. At least they got the clinks to, at the very least. But, that's true. Uh, but still, now it's uh, every time that cooldown's used, Timbersaw probably isn't afraid of anything. They just run down these lanes again. Yeah, and I, I would imagine they go again on that top tier two tower here in a moment. But instead, they're looking for a silence under the jug. Fought a thought about going with a landing rift, but he's going to decide not to take this fight. There's a, a couple of heroes from EG coming in. And Fata will back himself up in a way. And he does, of course, have that point dagger. He purchased up a few minutes ago while that action was happening in the top lane. Yep, and these have been all fights without a Puck being involved at all. And we've seen how long it takes to kill a timber saw, and that's with the chase, right? Imagine if Puck's there, and he can coil them and prevent them from chasing, or just lock them down for clinks to two shots some of these heroes. It'll be super, super easy. And this is nighttime for EG. They're getting pulled around the map. They're trying to find something. I mean, look at Yapsor's gold, 1600 in Earth Spirit, almost that Blink Dagger. Yeah, Yapsor, he can farm. We saw it yesterday for Misery, but now it's Yapsor on the Earth Spirit getting a lot to work with here in terms of itemization. And uh, they will go again top lane. This is what we talked about. You just run right back down. This top lane, still no exorcism. Puppy has the TP. Good silence, though. And they missed the Timber Chain. They're going to drop There's the Golem, and now Ace is in trouble. He is, again, very tanky. Spirit Siphon. They've got the Golem. They've got the Fatal Bonds. Crit should have a Void up in just a moment as well. And Ace. Stunned up here in the nice. Timber Chain. Beautifully done. They want this kill. Crit needs to be careful. He's getting low to the Timber Chain. He pops this stick charge. He jukes back to the north into the tree line. They've got the Crypt Swarm. They'll get it done. Hunter in the night with the Void. And Crit will secure a killing spree taken away from Ace. Finally, they bring down the unkillable Timber Saw, so it would seem. Yep. Very much needed a kill. Warlock Golem was committed, but still, it's totally worth doing it. In the meantime, though, more bad news for EG. They'll lose their Tier 1 Towers mid-1. Just goes to work with the Strafe. He's working at a Deso. No surprises there. More armor reduction. Exorcism is back up. Puppy's a little too far up. There's the Void. The Blade Fury coming out. They're going to get another kill here for EG. Nice little pickoff to get things going back in their favor. Very nice. Momentum is swinging a little bit with Timbersaw off the map. These heroes can't push these lanes as confidently anymore with the EG running around. They're going to even just use the Golem to push him to the top Tier 1 tower, which Ace will have to deal with swiftly. But uh, in the meantime, this gives more room for EG farm things up. Empower is the big thing we haven't talked about. Yep. The Magnus, I'm sure it's probably maxed at this point for Empower on Sumail, but uh, they will give it to Jug. They cleared out a couple of stacks, and this is going to be good news because now Arteezy is on top of the net worth, and he can carry this game. You talked about there's a point of the game where Ace isn't as strong as he has been, yep. and they're going to reach that pretty soon, I would imagine. Juggernaut's farm will continue to accelerate and probably surpass the rest of these heroes by quite a large margin. And he just farms faster than everyone else with that Empower, so. Yep. Game is much better for EG now. It's kind of uh, been stabilized. The problem is they just lost so many towers in map control, I think, in the past few minutes that yep. they've got to find something here in the near future. Looking at mid, looks like Secret are moving together as a team, trying to find something, EG in the enemy jungle meanwhile. And Exorcism still up and available for Fear, getting close to level 12. Scan will connect. That is a Radiant Scan, so yep. they know they that Misery is nearby, there. or someone. And Fury is about to run right into Fada. And that Warlock, as uh, our observer is pointing out, is not having the best game, let me tell you. Got everything he needs, brown boots. He's actually, sandals. I think he's like 800 gold, so he's getting close to Arcanes at the very least, but... Fata. Lose your orb, he won't jaunt, he'll head into a different direction. Puppy also heading to the north. They're going to actually meet up at the Tier 2 tower, and we'll see if EG want to go for a backstab. Mid-1 continues to throw the Searing Arrows, but uh, just some drive-by damage on that Tier 2 in the mid lane. Yeah, that's the Darkness Force, at least. Not too bad at all. But yeah, we've kind of hit the point where uh, Secret, yeah, they're still really strong, but they're not steamrolling you from tower to tower, right? EG has some breathing room to keep farming at this point in the game. All their heroes are starting to find more uh, space to farm. Juggernaut is starting to get into that uh, scary territory. Yeah. Where your farm's out of control and you can't really stop them, so... And the big item that just came out was, I believe, the Sumail Blink Dagger. He got it uh, a minute or two ago. So, RP, nice. skewers, and you can start making plays on heroes like Fata and uh, see if they can't find a couple of kills. It is daytime now, which is the big issue for EG right now. We'll have to back up here in a moment. Daytime is no bueno, Mr. Bueno. That's right. They have the Bloodstone as well, also no bueno for EG if, as they have to deal with a very tanky Timbersaw. Again, 14 Bloodstone charges and uh, second in net worth. 
We'll see how EG approach these next few minutes of the game. And we haven't really talked about it, but Roshan is also an objective that you have to look at if you're Secret as well, if, especially once oh, yeah. the Desolator comes out for the Clanks too. Definitely. I feel like Secret are playing on a bit of a timer here. Not in the sense that their lineup is bad later on in the game, it's just that they hit their peaks really early. Right, Timbersaw gets that unkillable stage at like level 7, right? And they manage to snowball and take a couple towers after that. But now he's in this period where it's kind of awkward. It's a transitional period where he needs to get some armor items up before he can actually tank the damage coming out from EG. And so, yeah. He goes through these weird phases where he's super strong early, then he gets that mid-game point that he's killable, and then he becomes insane later on in the game. And it feels like EG are taking advantage at this point where they're just farming. They're getting back into the game for the most part. They're still down 2k net worth. That's not that bad considering how many towers they've lost in the oh, early no. stages of this game. Not at all. They're doing totally fine at this point in the game. EG will just move around the map, try to find places for Arteezy especially to farm. Yep, but look at this. Secret may have their eyes on Roshan. They are near the area. Did they pick up the Desolator for... Um, for Clinks? For Clinks. I'm not sure. He was building into it. Imagine for mid one. Real quick. He was really close. He's almost He's at like, like 300 gold away from the uh, the desolator, it looks like. Yeah, super close. Yeah, so he, that, that, again, that's another big item coming out for Secret in terms of taking down towers, in terms of taking Roshan. That will certainly They'll help. They'll probably wait for that uh, before they do Rosh. And Secret are playing in this area where they've invaded the enemy jungle, so they have complete control there. They know EG are mirroring them and playing on the opposite side of the map, which frees up Roshan for them. It becomes super easy just to do that. Yeah, I think you would like to take out the tier 2 tower if you're, oh, if you're big RP. RP, Skewer back in. They've got the Omni Slash. He face shifts for now. They have the chocolate. That'll get the kill. He jukes it for a second longer. Ace does bring down Crit in the mid lane, but the trade obviously goes to that of EG until maybe they lose this tier 2 tower in the process. Yep. It's funny, they have to use these ultimate cooldowns for uh, just one kill, right? They drop the Warlock Golem up top for the uh, Timber Saw. Still, it's totally worth it. RP for Puck, yep, any day of the week. They need to be able to kill these Split Pushers, uh -oh. take them off the map. RTZ in trouble, silenced up, Magnetize pops the Mantis out, Blade Fury, TP taking a lot of damage, he's gonna be close, he cannot make it out in time. Secret will take care of RTZ. Oof. Very close. That's a massive kill. Yeah. You know, being able to take out these heroes that uh, think they're unkillable on the side lanes, prevent some split pushing. Really good. Now they can move into the side of uh, EG's, onto EG's side of the map, keep applying the pressure. Summer Cave comes out. Fear, they've dusted him. Chakram, they've got the Dream Quill. The Chakram will miss, but the Timber Chain coming in the Wind Rift. Very tanky. He's got the Spirit Siphon running as well, so he's still fine. He can pop the Exorcism, but he needs some help. The rest of EG are coming. He's actually the fastest man alive. Phase Boots plus Yules, and Fear is out of there. But in the meantime, Secret it looks like they've headed into the Roche Pit. EG are on the hunt, but they don't know this is happening. They've popped him down. They've got the Desolator to work with on Roche. And EG, they have to make a decision. There's no RP. They do have Golem. Can they get in here and contest this? And then, of course, Arteezy is back in three seconds as well. I feel like they should have an idea this is going on, especially since uh, it's like their next objective and Juggernaut happened to die in the bottom lane. Yep, they should have scattered it there with the... Night Stalker flying on, right? Secret, it, they only have Ace in the pit right now. They decided to bring mid one out. It's EG are going to go for a smoke. They have a blink RP at the ready in 20 seconds. Not quite yet, but it can skewer if need be. They'll check Roshan. They'll see that he's a little bit low. EG want to force something, especially with this exorcism and the Warlock Golem. And in fact, again, like we talked about, that RP is going to be up momentarily. And Fear, he's going to pop the exorcism for this, and Ace is going to go ahead and throw the Chakram inside so the pit. Here we go. He has no stacks They've got a great armor. silence. Fear, or excuse me, Fonda jumps in and gets dropped down. What a silence coming. The Flame Fury, who got the Aegis? It's Arteezy. They're still taking the fight. Puppy's in trouble. He'll get dropped. Mid one on the back lines looking for Fear. He's going to get Quiver Caped up the exorcism, bringing him down as well. It's going to be three dead for Secret, plus the Aegis going to EG. It's now a two for three as they lose to Mail. Ace, very tough to bring down. Arteezy is low, but there's the Omni Slash, the Crypt Room, a double kill for RTZ, four dead, and they get the Aegis as well, along with Roshan, what a silence to start that fight that from here. That was so good. That was huge, on to two, fought to Blinkton as it happened, and he was thinking, what, what's what's going on right now, I can't use my Wasn't abilities. It the, didn't Night Soccer just click silence on him before he blinked in? I, looked, I thought he got it on two for the, before I'm they came sure. to the pit. Either way, it was, it was fight winning for sure. Yes. And taking a fight into the Roshan pit like that against Warlock, not going to win that. That was a huge engagement for EG. It's also a timber saw. He can't stack up his uh, reactive armor at all. So he dies super, super fast. Now down to 11 Bloodstone charges. He's picked up the bots since then. He also has a Shiva's guard to work with, trying to get back to that tanky point, which you were talking about earlier on, earlier on in the game. So. Things looking a bit better for EG. They still have this Aegis to work with. They're down 1k, but at this point, that's pretty much nothing, especially with how many towers are still up that they can take to even out this game. The goal definitely does not tell the tale of this game at all. I mean, EG think about it. Feel... You're missing all of your outer towers if you're EG, yeah. and there's still, what, four left? 
Meanwhile, they're going to try to find big one here. The skewer back in. They've got the silence. The void as well. Misery able to hide and stay alive. Nicely done. Nicely baited out there from EG. Yep, big pickoff. 45 seconds and no flinks. Great gold cost for crit. He's going to get a nice little bonus there. But, uh, yep, so with Aegis now, it's more of, uh, I think, if you're EG, try to get some towers maybe, or do you just sit back and farm for the most yeah, part? Yeah, definitely. Now Juggernaut can push out these lanes super, super confidently, especially with Clinks off the map. And uh, they'll probably use that to start, you know, making some plays on some towers, get some vision down. Crit with the Spirit Vessel. Pretty great item. Yeah, very nice against the Timber Stuff, who has a ton of health regen. Yeah. Stops a lot of that. Serious work here against Ace. And uh, it looks like EG are posturing for the top lane. They have RP backup. Exorcism is still down. So too is Golem. But already Secret are in a position where they can defend this. The slower this game is, the better it is for EG. They're playing with Magnus. They're playing with the better late game. Timbersaw does hit a point where he's going to fall off. And, um, you know, Clinks, while he is a pretty decent late game carry, I feel like he definitely is. He gets out skill quite a bit. I mean, and he's not going to be able to farm as fast as Artesia is. Exactly. With power. It's just impossible. Yeah, that's the big issue. Finally, EG will get some map control back. They'll take this tier one tower top lane. Even with the glyph going, they will still grab this. Also, the uh, the way EG push, it's just this juggernaut with the healing orb behind, hitting the tower, supported by the Magnus and Warlock. And then you have Night Stalker on the side lane, scouting everything out. It's super, super safe. Everyone's covering each other, and you can't really go on anyone on the side of Team Secret. And and now they, they can't really kill, kill Arteezy because the way they would start the initiation is they would get a silence. He would just manta that off now. Exactly. It's, it's a very good adaptation from him. To land and save him. He's going to TP back home, get some more farm for his team, and of course, just try to push this wave out in the bottom. And he is up to 14,000 net worth, 2,000 ahead of the Timbersaw, who has had a great game. So Arteez is doing a great job. Secret, in the meantime, invading the enemy jungle. They're looking for crit potentially. Smales nearby. They're going to find crit, and they're going to blow him up. This is as daytime happens. The Splitter comes in. They're looking for more. Fear seems to be trying to get out of there. He's going to Glibber cape himself up. He's, he's the got the phase alive, and Yule Scepter. He's actually a race car, and he's gone. Yeah. Can't catch him. Still a nice little pick there from, from Secret. Get some control back into this game. Yep. It lets them leave their base safely, even though it is daytime. They need something to keep farming because uh, Dragonaut farms quite fast as a power. He's a full Scotty now and working on a Butterfly too. 2,000 gold towards that Butterfly as well. You know, he's farming ridiculously fast, and it looks like there's nothing they can do to stop him. Right. Farming super, super fast. And EG, what, do they just split up the map now? They don't even need to use the Sages to get too many more towers. Tier Pretty much. are a little too far, perhaps, for them to get. They are scalers. They would just want to keep extending the game as long as possible and uh, let Team Secret hit that wall where they just can't fight them at all. So then what do you do if you're Secret in this situation? Just try to keep the waves pushed out? Well, they're playing with uh, Clink, so he can always run around to Invis. Puck's pl uh, split pushing on the side lanes, and he's pretty much unkillable as well. So they need to use their split pressure to be able to uh, make EG, you know, split themselves up. Rotate, right. Exactly, and then go for these heroes that are alone. Because Puck's always going to be super, super annoying instead of on the side lane. He'll probably never just run around with the team. He wants to keep lanes out, and then they'll use lane pressure to find a pickoff eventually. Yeah, Fada's done a good job of that. It feels like he's been the one really pressuring this bottom lane. Yeah, but the EG, most part. they're not really exposing themselves, right? Juggernaut has Aegis, Sumail is always covering. He's got something. a Yules. He's got a Shuna Dream Quo. He's got the Yules if you're still ready if he needs it. Meanwhile, top lane, they found what looks to be, I think, mid one. Dropped down and killed big, very big kill for EG. Sumail on the run, Blink Dagger, can't use it. He's got the turn ticking down. They pop the action, some Puppy's gonna fall as well. They will lose Sumail, but that's a two for one trade across the map. And I believe they got the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane on top of all that. Yep, very nice. And they only used, what, the Warlock ult for that fight? And Exorcism? Yes. They still have uh, RP. And honestly, Juggernaut's enough to hit these towers. So they're going to keep going. They still have Aegis. Not for much longer, actually. And maybe it already... Yeah, it's already gone. 30 seconds ago, actually. Okay. So they don't have that to fall back on, but they feel strong enough that they're starting to pressure this tier 2 tower in the mid lane. It looks like Fada's going to try to cut the wave, though. Just bring it with him. Yep, nice play. I'm not sure what they do to Juggernaut at all. Like, it's only 26 minutes into the game, but he feels like he's hit this point where nobody can miss him. Phase shift, Fata blinking away. Crit's nearby. He is, uh, I believe he has Darkness ready. He actually doesn't, can't quite find it with the Hunter in the Night as well. So Fata's going to get out just fine, and uh, they won't be able to find this kill. Yep, just being annoying. You know, the uh, Clinks into Juggernaut matchup is pretty decent because the Singeros go through Magic and you can kill him early on through Spin, but... We've kind of missed that window where he is pretty good against him. Then you hit this window where Omni Slash destroys him for the rest of the game. I mean, especially with mid one having to be with Butterfly for RTZ, which is yep. just about done Almost here in a couple done. thousand. So I mean, RTZ feeling pretty good this game. 
A lot like last game, he's the one doing the heavy lifting for EG, but EG making some great moves all across the board in terms of Sumail, everybody getting things done. And they're going to try it again here with another smoke. They're going to empower Orteezy, and they're going to have Sumail and Crit lead the way. Roshan obviously still down for a little bit, and uh, they'll try to find something here like Secret caught out in the mid lane. And we'll see if that's going to be the case. Yep, I imagine that's going to be the next big objective for both these teams, unless they can find some sort of pick off before that, but... Nothing is really going to get forced at all. It's just about uh, playing the Roshan fight well. Right. And EG's lineup this game looks a lot more solid compared to the last game, right? All it takes is a Juggernaut sitting in the front who happens to be super, super farmed. And then the fight's easy from there. If they go in our Jug, then boom, you have Warlock Ultimate to counter initiate RP as well. Yep. It's very easy to play. And when we talked about the late game scaling supports, which you yep. mentioned EG have clearly in spades, so... This is a very big window for EG now. There is still a slight advantage from Secret, but again, a lot of that is, is because the towers, they still have two tier twos up and available. And they're still farming pretty well on Ace, but uh, again, next Roshan, much like last game, is going to be a big factor for both of these teams. And we'll see when it respawns here in about 30 seconds. Yep, it's up to Secret to make the plays on the map to stop EG from just split farming the entire map. We haven't really talked about Fury, but he's picked up a Shiva's Guard, now working on a Nocturne. Also, that Glimmer Cape pickup, I really liked it in the early stages of the game where they tried ganking him, he would Glimmer and just phase himself out of trouble. Yeah, there's also a ton of magic damage, so very nice against that. Not uh, the most common pickup on that Prophet for sure, but one that makes sense, a lot of sense. Yeah. EG getting aggressive, dropping some vision down. And Roshan is going to be 1 minute and 10 seconds from now. And that is a very big point of contention for these two teams. Yep, that is what the, both teams need to kind of get to the next stage of the game, where they can start forcing some of these buildings and take the fight to the enemy. If you would like to find a pickoff. They have found Secret, who have smoked up. The Absor has been voided up in silence as well. RP, Sumail, Kansas just didn't get it off in time. The Omni Slash going Ace He's in trouble. Dead. He's just dead already. The Omni Slash from Arteezy does more than enough work in these fights. Misery trying to find Fata. They have the Golem available if they want to use it. He's going to try to lose your but John away on the other side. Puffy getting caught. RP on a two from Sumail. The Skewer back as well. And EG, it looks like they've won this fight. Three for nothing, might even be a four, as the Void comes in from Crit. All four dead from Secret, and now with this Exorcism, they might be even able to push up to the high ground on this Tier 3 tower. Uh, made one still push up, but there's no creep. Oh, this thing is already dead. This Exorcism, Arteezy's damage, the Empower, more than enough to chew through this base. No buyback on their supports. Vada does have his, but this Rax is just gone, and there's not much you could do other than split push as mid one. And they're going to lose maybe two sets of Rax here, as they're already working on bottom as well, Rax. These fights just look so easy. The 14 secret played off the back of this extremely tanky Timbersaw. Now he dies within Omni Slash, pretty much. Not tanky at all. And then from there, they just they can't do anything at this point in the game. Two, they've kind of uh, they've missed their window. Two sets of racks. The crowd happy about what's going on in EG's camp at this point. No bias out there. They're trying to figure out whether or not EG are going to grab Roche at this point. Will they back up? Will they take Roshan? Will they grab the Aegis? I mean, that's really all they need to do, I feel like, to finish this game off. Yeah, that's probably just going to be it. Once you have these two lanes in, you just have to sit there. And oh, eventually, Team Secret puppy. have to move out. I believe you might be dead. Ooh, good boulder smash in the App Store, but I, I'm not sure if this is going to save him. Good Dream Crawl onto three. There's going to be a Wayne Rift as well. A lot of damage coming in the chocolate, but now they reset the fight with the Golem. Drop down. The upheaval is there as well, and Arteezy is too tanky and does too much damage to Blade Fury. Sumail will skewer Ace away. He'll try to Timber Chain out, but he is in trouble. The Chakram not doing nearly enough good boulder smash, but it's GG called, and EG will take game number two. Wow, it's just game three. Who would have seen that coming, Mark? I don't know, Brax. Definitely not me. Good call at the beginning of this game, but a lot of the fans out there very happy with EG's performance in game number two. Great draft overall, I would say, and way to hang on, honestly. That the beginning of that game, obviously, Ace is dominant uh, with that Timber Saw doing a lot of damage, they getting tower the pressure. Storm, yeah, I mean, they weathered it, they got through, and uh, clearly, here in DC, people very happy about this third game coming up, Brax. Who would have figured? Yeah. American team? No way. So, I don't know if there's any signings. Is there a signing going on, panel? What's going on over there? They, they don't know. Okay, great. So Only Slax knows. Slax is on. the only one. Where's the stage? Is he shows? out there somewhere? I'm sure he's out there somewhere. Slax is out there. So, we'll take a quick break, and that means game three is right around the corner, folks. Stick around. Okay. We're All sticking right. around uh -oh. as well. <laughs>